continue with chapter 15, Practicing the Holy Instant. This course is not beyond immediate learning unless you believe that what God wills takes time. And this means only that you would rather delay the recognition that His will is so. The Holy Instant is this instant and every instant. The one you want it to be, it is. The one you would not have it be, is lost to you. You must decide when it is. Delay it not, for beyond the past and future, where you will not find it, it stands in shimmering readiness for your acceptance. Yet you cannot bring it into glad awareness while you do not want it, for it holds the whole release from littleness. Your practice must therefore rest upon your willingness to let all littleness go. The instant in which magnitude dawns upon you is but as far away as your desire for it. As long as you desire it not, and cherish littleness instead, by so much is it far from you. By so much as you want it, will you bring it nearer. Think not that you can find salvation in your own way and have it. Give over every plan you have made for your salvation in exchange for God's. His will contents you, and nothing else can bring you peace. For peace is of God, and no one beside Him. Be humble before Him, and yet great in Him, and value no plan of the ego before the plan of God. For you leave empty your place in His plan, which you must fill if you would join with me, by your decision to join in any plan but His. I call you to fulfill your holy part in the plan that He has given to the world for its release from littleness. God would have His host abide in perfect freedom. Every allegiance to a plan of salvation apart from Him diminishes the value of His will for you in your own mind. And yet it is your mind that is the host to Him. Would you learn how perfect and immaculate is the holy altar on which your Father has placed Himself? This you will recognize in the holy instant in which you willingly and gladly give over every plan but His. For there lies peace, perfectly clear, because you have been willing to meet its conditions. You can claim the Holy Instant any time, anywhere you want it. In your practice, try to give over every plan you have accepted for finding magnitude in littleness. It is not there. Use the holy instant only to recognize that you alone cannot know where it is, and can only deceive yourself. I stand within the holy instant as clear as you would have me. And the extent to which you learn to accept me is the measure of the time in which the holy instant will be yours. I call to you to make the holy instant yours at once, for the release from littleness in the mind of the host of God depends on willingness and not on time. The reason this course is simple is that truth is simple. Complexity is of the ego and is nothing more than the ego's attempt to obscure the obvious. You could live forever in the holy instant, beginning now and reaching to eternity, but for a very simple reason. Do not obscure the simplicity of this reason, for if you do, it will be only because you prefer not to recognize it and not to let it go. The simple reason, simply stated, is this. The holy instant is a time in which you receive and give perfect communication. This means, however, that it is a time in which your mind is open, both to receive and give. It is a recognition that all minds are in communication. 
It therefore seeks to change nothing, but merely to accept everything. How can you do this when you would prefer to have private thoughts and keep them? The only way you could do that would be to deny the perfect communication that makes the holy instant what it is. You believe you can harbor thoughts you would not share, and that salvation lies in keeping thoughts to yourself alone. For in private thoughts, known only to yourself, you think you find a way to keep what you would have alone, and share what you would share. And then you wonder why it is that you are not in full communication with those around you, and with God, who surrounds all of you together. Every thought you would keep hidden shuts communication off, because you would have it so. It is impossible to recognize perfect communication while breaking communication holds value to you. Ask yourself honestly, would I want to have perf perfect communication and am I wholly willing to let everything go that interferes with it forever? If the answer is no, then the Holy Spirit's readiness to give it to you is not enough to make it yours, for you are not ready to share it with Him. And it cannot come into a mind that has decided to oppose it. For the holy instant is given and received with equal willingness, being the acceptance of the single will that governs all thought. The necessary condition for the holy instant does not require that you have no thoughts that are not pure, but it does require that you have none that you would keep. Innocence is not of your making. It is given you the instant you would have it. Atonement would not be if there were no need for it. You will not be able to accept perfect communication as long as you would hide it from yourself. For what you would hide is hidden from you. In your practice then, try only to be vigilant against deception and seek not to protect the thoughts you would keep to yourself. Let the Holy Spirit's purity shine them away, and bring all your awareness to the readiness for purity He offers you. Thus will He make you ready to acknowledge that you are host to God, and hostage to no one, and to nothing. And from the workbook, Lesson 118 for morning and evening review, God's peace and joy are mine. Today I will accept God's peace and joy in glad exchange for all the substitutes that I have made for happiness and peace. Let me be still and listen to the truth. Let my own feeble voice be still and let me hear the mighty voice for truth itself assure me that I am God's perfect Son. On the hour, God's peace and joy are mine. On the half hour, let me be still and listen to the truth. Amen. <laughs>